I have been a language teacher nearly all my life. I thought English, French, ooh la la, and Tigrinya both in high schools and universities. I learned Italian all by myself, va fancolo. I was forced to speak Amharic when Eritrea lost its independence in 1952. I know Aluruga is an Abyssinian liturgical language to help me talk my way to heaven. I know a pinch of German enough to help me to ask for water in case I find myself dying of thirst among Teutonic tribes. Now, when I was supposed to migrate to one of the lands that spoke the language mentioned above except my own, I landed of all places in Sweden, Hutton Oxo. Well, it was the best of choices. Okay, repeat after me. Happy, happy we shall be if we learn A, B, C, D. In my case, it was Swedish, and I had to learn fast. Although the maxim uttered by Oscar Wilde that life is too short to learn German may not fully apply to Swedish, in my case, however, it seems very applicable as I'm 68 and already with my one foot almost in the grave. When I first arrived in Sweden as a refugee, I was sent to a humble town known as Floby, inhabited by very quiet and introspective people who were, I should admit, very kind to me. But still, I used my English to communicate and I found the Swedes very comfortable with that language, which in some ways is very much related to theirs. A little while, and I got a letter telling me that I should follow my Swedish language courses in a town with a strange name, Hovde. To go to school and learn ABCD at the age of 68 is a bit embarrassing, and I add to it that I was a teacher and not a student of languages for a long time in the past. The teacher was very kind and had the patience of Job of the Old Testament. With Iraqis, Kurds, Eritreans, Somalis, etc. trying to learn a Nordic language in a small classroom, it was simply a pandemonium. Many resigned themselves to their fate. Of all the Swedish words, the one I hated the most was the particle tho. I don't know if there is a Swedish grammarian still alive who knows exactly what it means. To me, it meant anything and nothing at the same time. They say it is similar to the verb to get in English, perhaps. Then I came to learn that one Swedish word contained 1001 meanings depending on the context. It is like if you are in hell, vatten means water. But if you are in heaven, it means fire. It is like the chameleon which changes its color depending on the background. And sometimes the same word may connote the, an opposite meaning. It is like the word to kill would in some contexts come up with the meaning of to heal. There is nothing to do other than wreck your brain to have some inkling of the complexities of the language. One thing I discovered in language, however, helped me to get some sort of linguistic confidence. The prefixes such as til, be, for, up, o, at, in, an, ned, over, mut, etc. And the suffixes such as els, ing, ang, het, skap, etc. are the mother of the most Swedish verbs that enable the words to change meanings and connotations. What is irking, however, is that while in English, complicated or abstract words are simply borrowed from French or Latin, the Swedes tend to create words composite from their own vocabulary or from Germanic origins. Thus, the word incarnation becomes forkropsligande. They have the Latin word incarnation, of course, but they prefer their own. Now, if we dissect the word for crops ligande, it means cropis body. The prefix for makes it a verb and the suffix lig makes it adjectival noun, whatever that means. Let us take again the word ascension in English. 
The British borrowed it from French, but the Swedes, who hate to borrow as much as possible, have their own. Himmelsfart The uninterrupted chain of words that make many German and Swedish language learners to cringe with fear is another case in point. Some words surely tend to make you feel depressed. For example, Independence Day becomes Helvstandigheitensdagen in Swedish. Inferiority complex is Minderwardigheitskomplex. Not knowing when to stop and to start can really make one feel dizzy. In case you are dismayed by this one, you should see the longer ones which I have kindly declined to mention here. However, when I was in Germany, I have seen words that look like the freight trains that travel all the way from Jotobori to Stockholm. I was them from Herliunga station. Despite all this, I can say that I am now in a position to speak of rather halting Swedish enough to find my way out of daily problems, like asking someone sitting on the train that I booked for to kindly move to another seat, or telling a thief who comes by night that I have nothing whatsoever worth stealing in my house. Hey, though.